When did your something is very wrong here feeling turn out to be true? A few years ago, about 1 a.m. Sunday morning, I had to take my dog out before bed. I live in a rough neighborhood and I am a female, so I usually have my guard up regardless of the time. Before I left the apartment building, my gut told me something was up. The street was completely void of traffic and people except for a van parked out to the side of the road. Outside of it were three people whom I quickly identified as male. Right away, my reaction is to keep my head low, put my jacket hood up, and not bring attention to myself. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see they were struggling. On closer inspection, I see two of the men are holding up the other man between them. I make the assumption that they're headed home after a night of heavy partying and they're just helping their friend get sick or something. I'm telling myself this to ease my fears. Then they notice me and they stop everything and freeze. I thought that was odd and no good, so I drag my dog straight back to the building. I don't know if he even got the chance to pee that night. I go to bed and think nothing more of it, until it's time to take the dog out again in the morning. There was a notice in the elevator asking for witnesses as to exactly what I saw that evening, because a dead body had been found. So this wasn't a friend of theirs after all. They were ditching a body. Still upsets me to this day, and I will never ignore my intuition again. A storm was gathering as my dad was driving. I was eight, sitting in the back and looking out the window. I told him, you better hurry, that construction crane looks like it might topple. Everybody laughed at the idiot kid. That evening, the whole family was watching the local news. They opened with that crane crashing down due to heavy wind. Although nobody had been hurt, I felt vindicated. I heard a strange noise when I woke up. I looked outside my bedroom window to see if anything there had made that noise, and saw my oldest cat sitting on the windowsill outside of the other bedroom. She was staring into the room as if there was something in there that she did not like at all but could not look away. At that moment, I knew there was something or someone in the other room. Then I heard the noise again. It was like a soft squeaking, like someone shifting his weight from one foot to the other on wooden floor. I don't have wooden floors. I told myself there could not be an intruder in that room. It makes no sense that someone could get in there without waking me up and I gathered my courage and went to check it. When I got to the doorway, I saw two of my other cats in the hallway staring into the room very agitated. I peeked around the corner and heard the squeaky noise again. It was one of my neighbor's cats, very afraid and being trapped on my desk by my cats. I grew up in a fairly quiet neighborhood, and when I was 12, we got our first dog. It was my job to take him for a walk every evening after dinner. This dog was the goofiest, sweetest golden retriever mix. Not a mean bone in his body. He never met a stranger, and when he would occasionally escape, we usually found him in a neighbor's yard playing with some kids. He was the farthest thing from a guard dog you can imagine. So I'm walking him one night after dinner by myself, and suddenly he stops dead in his tracks in the very middle of the sidewalk. Out of the trees lining the neighborhood, maybe 10 feet away from me, this guy just comes strolling on out. I was pretty skittish at that age, and I didn't like being alone with strange men, like at all, so I was immediately unnerved. The guy walked up to me and asked if my dog was friendly. I responded out of sheer anxious panic and said that yeah, he was. The guy reached out to pet him, though my dog snarled and snapped at his hand, which I had never seen him do before. I apologized, made some excuse I don't remember, and hurried away under the pretense of getting my vicious dog away from him. Turns out this dude was a predator who assaulted three other neighborhood kids in those trees, and my dog was probably the only reason I wasn't the fourth. When I was in university, I was walking home from the bars in the Bywood Market in Ottawa with my roommate at the time. It was about 2.30 a.m. and we were looking forward to getting home and ordering some pizza when we came across two guys and a very drunk girl. Initially, we didn't think anything about it because it was a pretty common sight on a Friday night. But as we walked behind them for a few minutes, we noticed how out of it she was. One of the guys was essentially carrying her and her clutch was loosely dangling from her limp wrist. Our street came up, but instead Instead of turning down it, we decided to see what was going on. The guys explained that she was one of their girlfriends and had had too much to drink, so they were taking her home. We asked them a few more questions. What bar they were at, where she lived, if she was an Ottawa U student, etc. They gave pretty convincing answers, but all the same seemed really uncomfortable and wanted us to go away. During the conversation, the guy holding his girlfriend shifted her position to get a better grip, which caused her arm to dangle down and drop her clutch. Before they could move, my 
roommate grabbed the clutch and took out her ID. My roommate then asked if they knew her first and last name along with her birthday. This is where things changed. The other guy got really aggressive and confrontational while the other was silent. They didn't know her name or birthday. I then pulled out my phone and called the police. The guy dropped her and they took off running. We waited with her for about 10 minutes until the police and EMS got there. We gave a statement but did not have much to go on other than their descriptions. Police told us they suspected she'd been dosed and that she was lucky we happened to be walking behind her. Pretty scary stuff. All the praise in the world to these two guys. Seriously, you guys are heroes. Too many people would have just taken it at face value and walked away. But you sensed something was wrong and followed through. And as a result, protected this girl from a horrible experience. Got off the subway at night. There was one other person about a half a block behind me on my route home. This is a totally normal thing. Has happened thousands of times. Totally normal looking dude. Not even following me closely. I had a bad feeling. Such a bad feeling that when I turned the corner on my way home, I broke into a dead sprint and hid behind a dumpster in the shadows part way down the street. By the time he came around the corner, I was well hidden and could see him from my hiding place. As soon as I saw his reaction to the fact that I wasn't there, I knew I'd been right to hide. He started looking for me, muttering to himself. He went up and down the street, looking around corners. I hid and held my breath until he was gone. It was terrifying. I'm so glad I had that sudden inexplicable impulse to hide and listen to it. This is another one of those times, guys. If your spider sense starts tingling, listen to it. My friends and I went on a booze run one night back in college. We live in Flint and we're at a friend's house in a relatively bad neighborhood. We had our friend who was 21 go in while the rest of us waited. As we're sitting in the parking lot, we notice a dude standing by the trunk of his car a few rows of parking spots ahead of us. I had a bad feeling about him, so I was watching him the entire time while my friends were all chatting it up and laughing. I noticed my other friend who was driving watching too. Sure enough, after watching us for a second, he pops the trunk, pulls out a pistol and starts walking towards us. We noped out of there and floored it around the parking lot right as our friend came outside, yelled for him to get in and sped off. Turns out there had been a ton of carjackings in that area over the last few months. Not me, but my mom. When I was about 10 years old, I got invited to spend the night at my really good friend's home. My mom said no. I begged her to let me go, but she was adamant that I couldn't. She said that she just didn't feel right about it and that no amount of pleading was going to change her mind. A few weeks later, my friend's dad was arrested for possession of illegal explicit material. After he went to trial, it was found that he had abused several young girls. He would have his daughter invite them over for a slumber party and then prey on them when they went to sleep. If my my mom hadn't trusted her gut feeling, I could have been one of his victims. Several years ago on Thanksgiving, my mom was becoming extremely overwhelmed. The holidays have never been a great success in my family, and my parents had issues communicating, which led to a lot of stressful and tense dinners. And if it wasn't them, it was someone else starting a fire. Well, this year was bad. My mom had been cooking for hours to get ready to head over to my cousin's house. My dad was yelling about how we spend too much money on the holidays. It got to a point where my mom told me and my brothers to leave for the party ahead of them. We didn't get far from the house until a really bad feeling started sinking in my stomach. I knew my brothers felt something too. I said, can we go back? And my older brother turned around immediately. When we got there, my father was gone. He had left out of anger and my mom yelled at him to leave. My mother was in her bed, laying still with an empty bottle of sleeping pills beside her. She was still conscious when we came in, but started shaking and was falling asleep. We called 911. I later learned that the pills she had taken would only have put her to sleep for a long time, not after actually kill her, but clearly it was her intent. She's had severe depression and after this she got some real help. A little different perhaps, but I used to work for a company making barns. We were installing a rail made from old oil lines. I was using a large chop saw to cut the threaded ends off the pipe. A chop saw is basically a large gas powered chainsaw with a 14 inch diameter fiber blade in this case. I'd gotten to the last cut and as I stood up I had the weirdest feeling that something was wrong. Didn't know what, but I knew something was off. I looked around and checked my cut, which was good. Didn't mark the concrete below. Stood there for a solid five minutes with saw in my hands trying to figure out what was wrong. All looked good until I moved the saw enough to notice a large hole burning in the shin of my jeans. Turns out I had stood in the sparks. Luckily there was enough left for shorts. Oh that's a close one. This one definitely could have ended a lot worse. 
I don't know if I had a something is very wrong feeling for this. However, I felt something was off. I was at my mechanic getting routine work done on my car during summertime. I noticed that he had a coat hanger and every single hanger had a well-worn coat on it. I thought it was odd and out of place, but figured it's a mechanic shop. They probably just leave it there from the wintertime. No biggie. Not too long afterwards, maybe a few months, there was a drug bust at the shop. They were using those jackets to hold heroin. Our mechanic is in jail now, and honestly, he was a good mechanic, so I was disappointed. Ironically, my pediatric doctor got busted for bribery to prescribe certain medications and is likely going to jail too. Never had a vibe out of him though. This sucks too, since he was a great doctor. When I was younger, we would go visit my aunt a lot. Her brother-in-law was often there and sometimes watched her kids for her. Well, me and my sister just really didn't like him. We told our mom he made us uncomfortable and that we didn't want to be around him, even though he never did or said anything bad to us. Sometime later, it was discovered that not only was he abusing his teenage daughter, but he and his girlfriend were also abusing my infant cousin and taking photos of it. He's in jail now for a very, very long time. When I was in high school, I had gone to a party with some friends. From the moment we got there, something felt off. I bugged my friends to leave and tried to explain that something just felt off. Well, I was able to bug them for all of us to leave by bribing them with some steak and shake. We found out the next day that a bunch of police came about 15 minutes after we left and arrested most of the kids as well as a group of guys who were caught abusing a girl while she was passed out drunk. So glad we got the F out of there. I was walking with my daughter last week and we heard a siren as we approached a crowded intersection. Instead of stepping close to the edge of the street and waiting for the walk light like usual, my daughter stopped well back on the edge of the grass and touched my arm so I would do the same. A full 30 seconds later, a police car came screeching through the traffic and drove onto the sidewalk to get around cars stopped at the light. If we had been in the customary pedestrian waiting spot, I don't know if he would have seen us and I'm sure he wouldn't have been able to stop. I asked my daughter why she'd stopped so far back and she said, I don't know, I just knew we should. Smart kid. Not me, but my mom. And I'm doing my best to recall the story she mentioned to me a few months ago. My mom has been a psych nurse for over 30 years at a private hospital. One of the patients she was looking after was a very boisterous person in her 40s, and she had been in the hospital for over a week. One night, mom noticed this lady was very lethargic, saying that she was just feeling tired and was going to have an early night and to get her meds early. This isn't going where you expect. Mom thinks this is very odd for this lady, but everyone has off days and so she she gives this lady her medication and she goes off to bed. About five minutes pass and mom still has a knot in her gut about this lady and thinks she'll just check on her stats. So she goes to her room where the lady is just about to lay down and checks her blood pressure, pulse and oxygen saturation. This is pretty rarely done in a psych hospital unless people have other health concerns needing monitoring. This lady's oxygen saturation was down to around 80% I believe. To put it in perspective, if it falls below 92%, you're cells can't absorb oxygen and this can cause permanent damage. Mom, in her over 40 years of nursing, has never seen someone with such a low level. She checks again and the same result. Mom calls an ambulance and gets this lady on oxygen. Later that night, Mom gets a call from the hospital the patient was sent to from the doctor, who lets my mom know the lady's fine. She had a blood clot. If she had been left for another 15 minutes, the doctor is certain she would have died. The lady made a full recovery and gave mom a beautiful scarf the next time she saw her. I have two. First, when I was five, my late grandma was staying with us. One night, I woke up to some noise and found my parents and grandma up. She told me to be quiet and I realized that there was someone trying to pick the lock on our flat's door. While this is happening, my father was loading his shotgun and telling my mother and us to keep away from the door. He opened the door suddenly and tried to hit the guy with the stock of the shotgun. He started to run and my father after him, but he got away. Later that night, I learned that my grandma couldn't fall asleep feeling there was something wrong and then heard what was going on at the door and woke my parents. And when I was in high school, she had a stroke and lost the ability to speak. Because she was illiterate, it was hard for us to understand what she was trying to say. One day, I went to school after preparing her breakfast as usual. When I arrived, there was this urge telling me to go back home. I tried to pass it as boredom, but it got to a point where I felt very agitated and told my friends I'm going back home and left. When I was walking back home, I found my grandma wandering around without anyone. 
I asked her what she's doing. She pointed out like she's out for a walk, but I knew back then she couldn't find her way back without anyone because of her stroke. So I walked with her for a while and we returned back to the house to a very worried parents. This was before cell phones. I've never believed in the supernatural. I'm not a religious person, but I experienced this. I don't know what to call it. My oldest daughter stopped by my work one day and introduced me to her new boyfriend. He seemed a little off to me, but I decided it was just guy dating my daughter and let it go. Later, he met my wife and I and she told me later that he seemed off to her too. She has pretty good instincts about people, so we decided to investigate him a bit. Typing his whole name into Google, the first result was a mugshot from a couple of years ago. The third was an active warrant. More searching resulted in finding three warrants from different counties an extensive record, check deception, theft, driving while suspended, driving after a lifetime suspension, and driving while a habitual traffic offender, and a brand new marriage license for him and my daughter. They were going to get married later that week. We of course told her about him, but she insisted that he had already told her about all that and had taken care of it. We emailed links to her roommate who showed her, but she didn't have any luck talking her out of the relationship. They were in love and everything would work out okay in the end. We sent in an anonymous tip and he was arrested the next day at her apartment. My daughter then found out he'd been lying to her about pretty much everything. He had entangled her in a business he was trying to start that mostly involved her financing things for him, since his credit was trashed due to records for bounced checks and theft. She's still working to untangle herself from that. He's still in jail and, according to her lawyer, will be for at least two years depending on what happens in two other counties. Thank God the parents followed through on their instinct on this one. Apparently, there was already some damage done, but it would have been so much worse if they didn't do anything. I had a math teacher in middle school who came off as creepy. He would try and get close to us guys and try and act like old friends. He seemed afraid of girls for some reason. I didn't like him. He gave me a very bad feeling. After about a year at our school, he wasn't there suddenly. We had a police officer come in and sit us down and interview everyone individually. It turns out he was caught having an inappropriate themed party with some of his former male students from his previous school. He was sent to prison. I got to the airport early and got something to eat at the restaurant, boarded the plane, and everyone is on and I suddenly get a feeling of panic. Nothing else, just panic. I was used to traveling three quarters of the month back and forth every week, so no problems flying. But in this case, I had to get off that plane. I grabbed my stuff, ran past the flight attendant and said, don't wait for me, I'll get another flight, and sat down trying to calm down. An announcement comes over the speaker that they're looking for me and my flight is leaving. It leaves. I watched the flight start to take off. This was in Detroit, by the way. Then it happened. The worst cramps I ever had. Ran to the bathroom. Food poisoning from the restaurant. I would have been on a two-hour flight, stinking up the plane while ejecting the contents of my stomach from both ends. I'm sure the entire passenger compartment thanks me, though they don't know. When I was a little kid, I stepped outside to walk home from my neighbors two doors over. I smelled what I knew was a bear, which are common where I live. If you've ever smelled a black bear, it's not that different from a skunk, which is what my friend's mom told me it probably was when I asked her to drive me home, even though my house was literally right around the corner. The thing is, a skunk's smell is strong, but it doesn't travel. A bear's smell is more permeating. Begrudgingly, she drove me only to see the bear sitting on my back steps outside outside the door I would have tried to enter my house with. Black bears aren't that vicious, but my friend's mom apologized immediately about not believing me. Could have walked straight into that thing at the age of 12. When I was doing my PhD, I got offered the chance to do a Central European University summer school program to do a course that would have been extremely valuable. I even got offered a full scholarship to do the course, and free accommodation, etc. A really amazing deal. Two weeks before I was supposed to leave, I said to my boyfriend at the time that something's telling me I shouldn't go. And I was like, WTF brain, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. But the don't go feeling just kept getting stronger. So I withdrew from the course feeling stupid for doing it. The day after I was scheduled to leave, my perfectly healthy mom got sick. A week later, she was in a coma. A week later, we had to turn off life support. Her funeral was a week after that. I would have been away in her last waking moments. I knew some people who were really into off-roading in modified Jeeps. Once, they were invited by a group of people I did not know to go up a mountain in Colorado. They chose not to go, and everyone in the four Jeeps that went got caught in an avalanche and died. 
At a research institute, I walked into a mouse procedure surgery room for a quick moment to grab something and leave. After walking out, I felt, well, to be honest, like I was a little high. There were three other people in that room, including two undergraduates. So I got worried and went back inside to check things out. When I got back inside, I asked if they were feeling okay. One of the undergrads turned to me and said she was fine, but was flushed and looked a little out of it. So I went around to all the isofluorine chambers, an odorless volatile liquid that KOs mammals at low doses and kills them at higher, looking for leaks. Sure enough, the gasket at the bottom of one of the chambers had failed and it was leaking out and immediately boiling into gas and filling the room. I told them that their isofluorine was leaking and the postdoc told me they were fine and that he uses that machine all the time. He also pointed out that the isofluorine was in an air curtain biosafety cabinet and so even with the leak, they were protected. I called him an idiot because a biosafety cabinet recirculates air and doesn't evacuate it like a fume hood, which is what he should have been using. So I ignored him, propped open the door, and ordered the undergrads to get out of the room. I then went to their lab manager and told her what I had found. Their lab manager came down like the wrath of God. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.